The Lord be with you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Pam Goff, and on behalf of Christiansburg Presbyterian Church, I'd like to welcome all of you to worship today. And um, to our visitors, um, I want to extend a special welcome. And um, any of you that are joining us on YouTube a little bit later today, we um, are glad you're here and just join us anytime. Um, if you would take a moment and sign the red friendship registers that are on the end of each pew, and then as the offering plate is passed around, you can um, put the, your name um, in the folded sheet of paper there. Um, if you're a first-time visitor, please um, include your um, address, your mailing address, so we can send you a thank you um, later in the week. Um, we have... Um, Lots of announcements in the um, bulletin today. Um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. Um, the bulletin was typed early this week, and um, we um, left a few names out. So in, in addition to James Grzycki, um, Lyric Howard, and Harriet Williams, um, uh, distribution was also um, help this week for Room at the Table by Tara, Jordan, and Cortland. Um, they showed up to coach and assist. Um, the session is going to meet um, this coming Tuesday. So if you have any information or concerns that you would like for the session to bring up during this um, meeting, please contact one of the session members before Tuesday and um, everything will be addressed at that time. And we have a very special um, day today because the children are joining us. And um, we're always really, really excited to see them. And um, as an adult choir member, I'm excited to be able to sing with them. So that will be fun today. Um, does anyone have other announcements that we need to share? Um, I want us to um, take a moment to um, address everyone who is on our prayer list today and um, so as I read these just um, think prayerfully about their healing. Um, Abby Cook who's recovering from pancreas surgery, Anna Smith um, who played for my wedding, um, she's facing major surgery, um, a cousin of Linda Crate, Royal Boswell, um, he has health concerns, Jim Taylor who's um, recovering from a stroke, Tammy Kraft, um, who's recovering from COVID and the flu. Marcella Woods, recovering from surgery. Jennifer Macon and her family, and um, they're grieving the loss of her mother, Colleen Wheeler. <clears throat> Margot Thompson, who's receiving treatment for cancer. She did get to ring the bell this week. Um, she completed her radiation, so that was an exciting step for her. Estelle Dobbins, who's at Cringy Health Center. Um, Joyce Shelton, who's recuperating from spinal cord surgery. Gail Custers, receiving, can um, receiving um, medical concerns. Um, Mark Thomas has ongoing medical concerns. Evelyn Kimball, who's recovering from a fall, but we're glad she's here with us this morning. Um, Mary Childress is receiving um, medical concerns, and then um, Ken and Lori Keeling's son, Nicholas Keeling, um, is, has ongoing treatment for leukemia. Randy Thompson, um, treatment for cancer. Jason Hammond, um, who has ongoing medical testing. Herb Miller, um, who is receiving hospice at Crunchy Center. Um, Patty Walker-Jordan is receiving treatment for cancer. Fran Hart has medical concerns. And then um, remember all of those that may not be in the bulletin but do have medical concerns this week. Um, now if you would, take a few minutes to greet each other and share the peace of Christ.
Now as Kathy plays our prelude, let's just take a few minutes to center ourselves. Now, as you're able, um, would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Heaven sent from God of God all that is good, worthy, and honorable, all that represents the character and the goodness of God. Let it be that our wisdom, our nature, our words and actions reflect such a heavenly spirit. Let us praise and time of let us let this praise and time of worship be received as heaven sent, God's gift to us of time, space, and opportunity. Let us come before God and raise our worship. In the hymn number today was left out. It's number three thirty nine. Be thou my vision.
pray. Gracious God, we gather here in this place to draw near to you, even as you draw near to us. We come humbly and honestly and offer this time to you. All creation reveals you from stardust to sawdust, from Pike's Peaks to tiny toes. Thank you for sending Jesus to show us your love for us and for teaching us how to live well, honestly caring for all our brothers and sisters at home and all around the world. In our worship, may we have open minds and faithful hearts as we seek to understand what it means to be accountable to your teachings and to live by your ways. Amen. And now we come to our time of honesty before God. The Sacred One longs for us to become more like Jesus, to live peaceful lives, to build healthy relationships with all people, to re create community, and to engage in good stewardship of our world. But too often we fail to live up to our Lord's high standards. We give in to envy, craving what is not ours, speaking carelessly, insisting our way is the proper way, or seeking power and authority. As hard as it may seem at times to comprehend this, the very one who held up such high aspirations for how we might live is precisely the one who is most generous in extending us grace. Let us offer ourselves in honesty to the Lord, trusting in God's mercy and grace. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord, we honestly confess our faults and failings to you. Forgive us, we pray. Shine your holy light into our hearts. Show us where we hold on to grudges, resentments, or anger against our family or friends. Forgive us for our microaggressions, most of which we barely recognize. Help us to go bad feelings and to let in the love and forgiveness. We long to be the people you made us to be. With the help of the Holy Spirit, May we always draw near to you in all things and look to Jesus to guide us. Amen. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, children, and thank you, Angie. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? 
Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Help us to hear now and follow what you say to us today. Amen. And that came from the book of John. Our first reading is from the wisdom of Solomon. And it, it so first let me say, I'm going to use a lot of much bigger words, but I'm going to say the same thing that Jesus wants us for a sunbeam. So, um, so just know that at the heart of all of it, that's where we're going to end up. Um, so from the wisdom of Solomon, from this book, there is a kind of a, an interesting literary structure, which is uh, these individuals are talking to one another about the futility, basically, of goodness. And then they plot a little scheme, but then the story flips at the end. So it begins. The ungodly, by their words and deeds, summon death, considering death a friend. They pined away and made a covenant with death because they are fit to belong to his company. For they reasoned unsoundly. They said to themselves, short and full of sorrow is our life. There is no remedy when life comes to its end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us, and, there, and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law, and accuses us of sins against our training. The righteous man professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof for our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways as unclean. The righteous man calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is their father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, God will help him, and will deliver him from the hands of his adversaries. Let us test him with an insult and with torture so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hoped for the wages of holiness, nor discerned the prize for blameless souls. And now, as we hear the next two scripture readings, which Pam will lead us in, we will hear an alternate way. And this is from the New Testament, um, Mark 9, 30 to 32, and then ja um, several scriptures from James. As Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee, he did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be portrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. And then from James, who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done and gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. 
Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace 